is the Glass Cannon Network. Welcome back to the Glass Cannon Fam Jam. You guys like puzzles? No, love puzzles. <laughs> Jigsaw Wait. puzzles? Yeah. No. I guess that is a, an no, important Joe clarifying answered. question. Skid doesn't like them. Joe likes them. No, not jigsaw puzzles. Oh, puzzles, no, I don't like... In general? I don't like yes. brain teaser puzzles. I don't enjoy them. Okay, puzzles? Wait, wait, wait. I was going to say yes, but then everyone started breaking them down. I don't like riddles. Is that a mm. puzzle? <laughs> it's, a, it's in the puzzle family. Uh, Sydney, puzzles? I like to think I like puzzles, if that makes sense. All this right. became a complicated question. It's a very safe answer. <laughs> yeah, really I really. like to think I like puzzles. I I'm want people to think I like puzzles. <laughs> yes. yes, that's the important. I, no, no, the important thing is I want people to think I'm smart enough to be good at puzzles. And usually I am not good at puzzles, which makes me frustrated. Which makes you hate them, <sighs> yes. like me. Yep. Here's why I bring it up. I love puzzles of any shape or form. I love puzzles like the, the, the traditional 100 piece, 500 piece. I've loved them since I was a kid. And it's crazy because my four-year-old, he's been into it since he was a baby. He just loves puzzles. But I also love brain teasers and riddles and all that. I love any type of puzzle. Um, but my mother-in-law, she gets like, just she doesn't know what to get me. So she just gets a bunch of stuff. And she got me this thing. I think it's called like the, the alchemist, the Egyptian alchemist scallywag or whatever. <laughs> And it's basically, I don't know if you can see this, it's like a jar. Oh, yeah. With, yeah, yeah. Uh, with a, uh, yeah. It, there's a, you know, I can't I don't even know how to describe it. There's a little ball, ball in there, a yeah. wooden ball. There's a stick in the jar, and this, you can't pull the stick out because there's a screw in it that has a nut attached to it. And then at the end of the stick is a hole where a metal pin is attached. And the goal is to disassemble this, pull everything out of the jar, and then reassemble it. And without breaking the jar, essentially. So and these so, puzzles are great. The hardest part of these puzzles, though, is not getting the thing out. It's putting it back together and like resetting the puzzle. Right. I've been trying to get it out and I haven't got there yet, but I think I've figured out the general strategy for getting it out. Just just um, like shake the shit out of it. Break the glass. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you is watch that, like is TikToks. That your solution? <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned that because if you watch like TikToks of dudes that are like way into this, and I say dudes because everyone I've seen is just a bunch of dudes. So I'm going to show how to do this puzzle. The first thing they do is they shake the shit out of it. And sometimes that like gets it going. But I tried that on this. It does not work. You basically, it looks like you have to like use the 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 metal thing that's in there to slow and then have the ball rotate the nut on the yeah. screw. Oh. Again, I think I can get it out. I've I've uh, but I haven't done it yet. So we'll maybe see if I'm you do a it by the idiot. end of the app. Yeah, I'm just gonna that's the whole show, by the way. I can't <laughs> tell if your mother in law knows you extremely well or knows you extremely well and hates you. <laughs> it's like, how can I basically punish him for a year? I know. Because I have to do it. Puzzle. That's the thing. I have to do the scallywag puzzle. And I, I haven't got it out yet. I, I think I will. Putting it back in, though, man, I just I can't wait till I do that because then I can just throw this thing out. <laughs> when you, when you finally get it, when you smash it against the ground right. outside. I do it like I'm christening a ship. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, puzzle. Scallywag. <laughs> scallywag. <laughs> Yeah, that is a that's a particular kind of puzzle that I do enjoy for a a good period of time. Like I mean several hours. Like I will just get lost in it, like messing with it. And I do have the patience to go for a long time. Uh because you always know there is a solution. There there yeah. actually is. Uh and if I can't figure it out, I don't know. With those, I don't feel dumb if I can't figure it out. I don't I don't like like um you should. Uh like uh, escape rooms. Like riddly like kind of puzzles. You like escape room? You like escape room? I enjoy the you social aspect of going to an escape room. I never figure out one thing, <laughs> not one thing. <laughs> I'm just the guy in the room that's like totally eats up the red herring, like whatever is the thing <laughs> that means nothing. Like I spend all my time on, and uh, my friends are just happy to let me do that while they actually figure out the puzzle. 
<laughs> I agree. I don't like escape rooms, but it's because I don't like working with others. Um, same. And I get Hard super competitive. Same. Like if someone finds the key, I'm like, oh, fucking shit, I'm not playing this game anymore. <laughs> That's my toxic trait. Oh my yeah. God, I'm the same exact way, Kate. Like if someone said, hey, do you want to go to escape room? I'm like, yeah, let me go do one by myself. Then you guys yeah. can do the next one. I would do way more. So there's always one in a group. I went to an escape room for the first time for my birthday this past year with like two friends and with Xavier. And I've never been, I was very excited. I was like, I'm sure this is going to be fun no matter what, even if we lose. And immediately we're put into two separate rooms. It's like a jail escape game. And we're in two separate cells and we can't see each other. And immediately they were like, fuck you guys, we're doing this on our own. And me and my friend were like, the whole point is we have to work together. <laughs> we're not gonna solve it because we can't see each other. We have to like escape together. And they were like, you're on your own. And I was that like, sounds this is- like, That sounds to me like real jail. I yeah. was gonna say, That's this a pretty is how good it would simulation. Go. <laughs> this is how it would go. Yeah, my uncle was sentenced to a federal escape room to, for four to six years. He didn't really enjoy it that much. Did he do a good job? Did he escape? <laughs> did he, I mean, it did took he him figure a while, out but... the riddle? <laughs> it took him a while. Yeah. Um, good behavior. That was the riddle. Are any of you familiar with, yeah. the, with, the, with the Kane's Jawbone book? I've heard of mm -hmm. it. It's a, okay, so it was a book that was written, I think, like in like 1930 or 1935 or something. And it's basically a hundred pages and the pages are not in order. It's a murder mystery. And you oh, have oh you were talking about, yeah. Okay. Were we talking about that? I, mean, I, think, I think you were talking, cause we're talking about a uh, choose your own adventures or something. I yeah, think. it is it like a choose your own adventure, but like apparently yeah. only like four people have solved it. Like there was a, pro every time they re-release it, there was like, you can win. It was British. So it was like, you can win 20 pounds. Uh, and like two people solved it in the first go and then no one solved it again. And then they re-released it. So I've been thinking about getting it. It's just a book, and then you just. But like, apparently, like people, it just like ruins people's lives, and they turn their bedrooms into like murder walls, like arranging the pages, <laughs> trying to figure out the, like who, because you have to wow. figure out like who died, who killed them, and the motive, and it's a, it's it's apparently very complicated. Um, I love puzzles, but I'm not as good as, at them as I want to be. So there's always like I always like. I can usually oh, work God. through them, but I like it takes me a long time. Yeah, I mean that's the thing to me is like by definition. Like you can never be good enough at puzzles. You know what I mean? Like they, they will, there's always a harder puzzle. And you yeah. know what I mean, like it's That's just, it, yeah, it's a really, it, it just hurts your brain and it eventually makes you feel bad about yourself. Well, no, when your brain <laughs> hurts like that, that means it's growing. So it's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Matthew, if you buy that book, I will also buy that book. Do you want to have a little book club and see if we can, solve the murder, who solves it the fastest? We're gonna find them like locked in a room at some point in a couple months, just, just like foaming later. at the mouth with paper yeah. Matthew has yeah. like a Forrest Gump beard. <laughs> Written all over the wall, scribblings of a madman. We're like red, red dead thread and connecting the pages it. everywhere. Uh, well, Caitlin got, there's this other thing called Dear Holmes, which I think I've talked about too, where it's, it's you get letters as if you are Sherlock Holmes from like, Scotland Yard is having trouble and you have to, and they send you a letter and you have to help them solve the mystery and you get like five letters and you can, Caitlin got it for me as a gift, which is an amazing gift, but they are like, I didn't, I, I, the baby just been born. I was, my brain was not functioning anyway. And they're like a little harder than they're like a little harder than I wanted to be at the time. Yeah. They've, they're sitting on a stack on my bookshelf. <laughs> I thought it was a magazine of homes for deers. <laughs> and I was like, why would want that? Deer homes. I just Deer live in the homes. woods. Deer homes. I just homes. live in the woods. Like, Deer homes. like a birdhouse? <laughs> you want to invite uh, them into your yard? My children and I build deer homes. Deer homes have a silent <laughs> element. They're, they're all deer. puzzles. And you get sent the pieces and you have to build the home for the deer yeah. together. Oh, mm. my aunt gave me another deer home. <laughs> <laughs> I did always wonder, like, in your backyard on a forklift, <laughs> like this huge <laughs> fucking shed. <laughs> I did always wonder where deer go to like sleep and stuff. So that's where they go. You know, if you ever see a deer sitting in your yard, and like a small deer, you just leave it there. You know that. But what Maybe else I would know you it. do? I well, you might because you might like, hey, the fuck out of here, deer! You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go out there banging pots and yeah, just on. throwing wine bottles at it. I told you I threw out that deer home. <laughs> so if you see a deer laying in your, I found out this this out because uh, up here in Westchester, it's fucking animal. It's like the wild. And uh, if you find a deer in your yard, it usually means the mother left it there and is going to come oh. back for it. So you don't scare it away. Mm. Don't offer it food or piss on it. 
Just like leave it there. <laughs> oh, <you> There's <should laughs> a job outside. A juvenile, a juvenile deer. If you see yeah, a you buck, like that deer. If you see a buck in your yard, you can get the buck out Run of there. Adult deer, deer also lay down. <laughs> this is true. Look but you could tell deer. They don't care. They don't care. They're still laughing about peeing on deer because they're on. boys. <laughs> you guys are the epitome. We unpack that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> This kid half cocked and piss on the poor baby deer. Oh my god! <laughs> they get real excited. It's like, oh man, I've been having to go all day. <laughs> I've been waiting Finally. for this. <laughs> I get to do as nature intended. You guys are. There's oh. this video, and I feel like you oh. must have seen it. And it's like two boys. Uh, young boys filming like each other doing little tricks on their driveway, like scooter tricks. And one of the boys falls and he starts to like get upset and start to cry. And his friend comes over and he's like, it's okay. It's okay. And he's like, uh, uh, and he's like, oh, you know what it was? And he looks at the ground. He's like holding the camera. He's like, it was this damn ass rock. And he holds up this little pebble and the kid's like, you're right. It's that rock that I fell on. And he's like, should we do something gay to it? Like pee on it? And <laughs> Should we do something gay to it? <laughs> and the kid's like, yeah. And he makes him feel better. And then he's like, can you stop filming? And it is the most beautiful, but like quintessential 12 year old boy moment of two boys being like, you guys want to do piss on it? And he's like, yeah. Oh, and beautiful. you guys see a deer and your first thought is, I should probably go pee on that. Pee on <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Just leave it alone. You're not supposed to do that. You know, Troy, <laughs> thank you for telling me. That's the homeowner's instinct. That's the initial homeowner's instinct. Homeowner's pee on it. Yeah. Right. Don't tell you your see kids. a deer in your yard, pee on it. I own yeah. the land underneath you, deer. Yeah. I have the right. <laughs> Prove it. Not supposed to do it. It's territory marking. I'm going to pee right. on this. That's right. Oh, now well. you know. <laughs> um, the more you know. <laughs> well, man, that was a... Uh, it was a hell of a good time last week. I, I said that the, the new uh, the new series is going to be shorter, and it was obviously long. I, I knew it would be with nineteen <laughs> enemies, but uh, God, it's good to be back. Good to be back with this crew. I mean, this is the crew. Once the tour comes back, hopefully in April, this is the team you're going to see on the road. Uh, and and hopefully by then, Strange Aeons will have just moved back to the tour show, uh, and we'll be launching the new Glass Cannon podcast with this same crew playing the Gatewalkers Adventure Path, which, you know, you're going to have in your hands if you want it. By like next week, just you leave it alone. Don't read it. and Just watch the show and enjoy it. Yeah. Don't just buy read. it and don't read it. Yeah, buy it and don't read it. <laughs> People love reading it. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited. This is, this is going to be a real exciting year. We jumped, we were talking about gum last week and then we had a long fight. Uh, I didn't even get to say, you know, Happy New Year. I'm so excited. Um, but we have another fight this week. And uh, I think we should just fucking get into it. The, the, the boat, uh, as as the blood from these eight sailors, actually one of them fell in the water. So seven sailors <laughs> seeps into the, the floorboards of the blood wind, as it were. Uh, yet again, the boat laughs. <laughs> it almost seems like it's breathing, like the deck is kind of like moving in and out. This boat is alive, perhaps? The sails flutter open, and these two figures emerge. One, again, I said this like spectral form. You can see straight through it, incorporeal. Woman wearing, it almost looks like there's the bits and pieces uh, of a uniform, like a, a boat, uh, like a, a ship, some sort of like she belonged to a crew of a ship. Uh, not clinging to the specter, but a part of the specter itself. Floating there, she comes out, and then on the other side, this uh, denizen of Lang, as Eris discovered during a uh, uh, an occult check, I believe it was last week. Yes. Um, this denizen of Lang, captain of the Bloodwind, the captain who hired, sent the Draculus ask after you, left it behind on the shores of that nutty beach, and it ended up killing two of you. Almost killing all of you, almost succeeded. He wouldn't even have to do this. But now he's here to finish the job. Ethel's in rough shape. The rest of you are okay. But that was nothing. This is the real fight. And the captain's tricorn that you need is atop this man's head. You've already missed one gift. And Sarnath, the uh, 
the doom idol, Bokrug. You want to show up to the mad poet with another gift missing? Uh -uh. Roll for initiative. God damn. Okay. <sighs> Rock and Maybe roll. Just get along. For initiative. I know. <laughs> it's weird. This whole game is based on murder. <laughs> it is. We don't talk about that enough. It's a murder game. It really it's is. Murder. <laughs> you get together with your friends and play a murder game? Yeah, that's so funny. It's like, we want to go do an escape room. Nah, I'm going to play a murder game with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I we find to, as many people as we can and kill them. <laughs> I wanted to get Clue for Archer, but I you know, I didn't want to get the actual Clue. Like, who killed Mr. Body? With the, he hung him in the study. But they have Clue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play. I think he killed what himself. I think, Daddy? I think, he, I think Mr. Body hung himself. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, they have Clue Jr. And uh, it's it's like, who broke the toy and in what room? Oh, oh that's smart. That's cool. So you got to figure Clue out what Jr. toy. And uh, and at the uh, end, does whatever kid did it get beat? So you really like send a message home about <laughs> breaking <laughs> things in the house? Yeah, if it's like Mr. Green is the one that broke uh, Mr. Potato Head in the kitchen. You then beat Mr. Green to death. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the rules. As per the rules of the game. Savagely beat Mr. And then Green. Mr. Green is severely punished for touching daddy's tools. <laughs> <laughs> daddy, are you okay? <laughs> Al Aldo, what'd you get? I got a 32. Oh man, we're back. Eris. <laughs> we're back, baby. I rolled a natural three, which means I got a 40. Just kidding. It's a 14. 40's <laughs> just your go-to number. That's a good number when to go to. When in doubt, 40. 40. <laughs> uh, Atticus. Uh, 27 for Atticus. 27 for Atticus. Ethel. 24. Terrible roll. 24 for Ethel. And finally, Suki. Suki got a 26 and a 22 for Pepsi. That's right, old Pepsi. Um, if you go to the map, you'll see both Pepsi and Chicken Poon are there, but I didn't know if chicken. Oh. <laughs> what I is took, this? I took it an image like a of a chicken, chicken a harpoon. and a harpoon. We can't see I... the Chicken Poon name. You gotta make it so we can see the Chicken Poon name. Yeah, yeah you gotta oh. put the name under Chicken I'm not chicken putting name. it on stream until you <laughs> put that name, make that name. All right, so I wanted to, but for some reason it's not giving me the option to. I'm zooming um, in so much because it's so funny. I know how to do it now. <laughs> they changed it on, on Roll20, and I know how to do it, but oh, I've made, oh, you made it 20 so minutes small. to explain it to you. It's a harpoon and a chicken. It's going to be a real pain in the ass to move around, but <laughs> it's there. It's, chicken. it's awesome. probably not active anymore, <laughs> honestly. Uh, it says briefly active. I feel like it's like teleconnect project projectile, but with feet, you know? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of the chicken, but leave the harpoon. <laughs> Keep yeah, the okay. You know, Keep no. the poon. You never know. Right? Kill the chicken. Leave the poop. Um, all right. It's, wait, you said Pepsi had a 22? Yeah, uh, Pepsi has a 22, yeah, initially. Okay. Oh, wait. I'm so sorry. I did this the last time, too. I don't have a 26. I have a 28. I have incredible initiative feet, and I always forget. That's a 28. Incredible initiative. Okay. Well, that's incredible. Thank you. Even more incredible. Aldo rolled highest. Aldo, let me show you what you see. Let me go to my GM info overlay. You see Kachaka. There's oh, the captain. Wait. All right, things are happening now. What? And uh, very similar to Eris last week, there are multiple mirror images all layered over the space of the captain. Let me do a, a little pop, pop, pop and lock here. What is it called? A little shift Z. Pretty has cool, it, huh? Has it been more than one minute? I don't think that worked, whatever you thought you did. It didn't it work for me. You can't see him? It's, sh it's nope. shift C, right? Is it shift yeah, C? Yeah, uh, shift C. Yeah, there you oh, go. There oh, there we go. Whoa. There oh, we go. Oh, 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 so that. cool. Look at that Lang Ruby. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, yeah. yeah. Is that a Lang Ruby in yeah, your it's pocket? All, <laughs> that is gorgeous art. It's all in like tattered, like mummy rags. Uh, so yeah. cool. And it's the good mask. thing about that art is it's definitely from the book and not lifted from the internet. Oh, stop lifting stuff from the internet, man. <laughs> I'm busy. And then on the other side, in the other cell, you see this sexy lady. Ooh, sexy. Ooh. Ooh. 
not good. And this is this is the one that uh, Eris identified as a wraith, right? This is a yep. wraith. It's incorporeal, yeah. but it's powerless to sunlight. Yes. Do you have any sunlight spells? Now's the time to bring them out, Aldo. Yep. Okay. Question: line Has it up, been a line minute up the since like the last fight? Has it been a minute since I, does the that, last fight? Do I still have a mirror image? Does Ethel still have eyes? Are does we just going into the not? next round, or has it been ten minutes? How, how many? How minutes? long did the eyes last? Um, the eyes last for one minute, and okay. so do my mirror images. Um, I'm going to roll the, the the GM die that says maybe or no. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you're, you still have them active to start the combat. Amazing. Okay. That's that's that bodes well for us. Okay. I'll say they're half gone. Sure. <laughs> Huh? Okay. <laughs> There's only uh, 500 Five eyes left. Few of them close. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'll say for, for the purposes of this combat, um, they're good for another uh, five rounds. Cool. And it is Aldo's turn. Suki, Ethel, and Atticus are now on that ship. Aldo and Eris remain on the Cell and Starling. All right. Aldo has a little bit of a trick up his sleeve. Uh, but to use it, he's going to have to leap across. So he wants to do so. He's going to leap to the other boat. Do you have uh, 30 feet of movement? I have 25 feet of movement. 25 feet of movement. Okay, so remember it's five less. But you know Basically, what? We it would take there. you two actions to get there. Um, unless you want to roll an athletics check and just make it, then you can use it and want do it in one action. Well, you're supposed uh, to have 10 feet. Just. Just get over there. I don't want to get okay. you on hamstring. I do. I'm also like ten feet higher than. The That's why I'm saying I'm going to so. let you do it. If you were on the where Eris is, yeah. um, obviously Eris could make the jump. But if she was further back, I would say Perfect. you'd have to take two actions. But you're okay where you're higher up. Okay, great. Um, so Aldo, boom, boom, like jumps across to the other ship, and he is going to use quick alchemy, which he hasn't done in a while, which will allow me to use some of my daily uh, reagents to create a bomb or uh, alchemical concoction on the fly. I think and, I and I am going to create a uh, a moderate bomb of bottled sunlight. Yeah, I oh, knew it. I knew amazing. it. Yes. yes. What? Hell yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. that's that incredible. Was a what a huge piece of knowledge I just gave away last week. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> I didn't think any of you could do anything about it. Holy yeah. shit. Okay. So he quickly, like, mixes a couple of things together, like in one of the flasks on his belt, and he's just like, it's sunrise, baby, and throws it across at the wraith. Uh, oh, that's a 22 to hit. All right. Uh, let me go back to its uh, AC. That is a miss. Okay, uh, that's still five points of positive energy splash damage. Okay, five points of positive energy splash damage. And now, if does it have to hit for the sunlight property to do something? Uh, that I don't know. Um, or what the sunlight effect? Glow, sheds bright light, feels. Um, it sheds bright light, man. It does, yeah. Does it, does it have to hit to shed bright light? Yeah, like it um, did splash damage. It did damage that was of that light, um, but it's not a lingering damage, right? No, no. Um, yeah, this is the thing. I don't. It, it. I think it's like mechanically. Actually, I'm not sure that it has any of the properties of of sunlight because it's not really mentioned. Like I, I can, I can. I can say I can I can emit bright light from it, but it doesn't say like sunlight. It doesn't say it's proper so even though the name of it is bottled sunlight. And um, is it called bottled sunlight? It is. Yeah. Is that exactly what it's called? In in first edition. Oh wait, it definitely undead shed with light. a particular vulnerability to sunlight take the maximum amount of positive damage from bottled sunlight. Okay. Um, so it is sunlight. It is sunlight. All right. So yeah. I'll say for. Probably for where it took the splash damage. Oh God, this is going to be brutal. It, it's it's going to have its its effect uh, for at least this round. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, which for this is stunned two and clumsy two. Hell great. Um, wow. And, amazing. Uh, 
Yeah, and I'm going to throw another one. Nice. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, okay, that is a 30 to hit. 30 does hit. Okay, so that's eight points maximum positive damage and 2d4 fire damage. Uh, if it's vulnerable to such things. Um, okay. Uh, so five points of fire damage. Okay, you see the fire damage doesn't do anything, whereas the positive definitely did. Okay. Um, and then, so that's eight, so, uh, and then that's four more points of positive splash damage. Four more points of positive splash damage. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah I think the way it's written is like it wants to be this, uh, this continual sunlight for it to have these effects. But it's yeah. a lot more fun in the spirit of the game where you were able to use this to have it have an effect, just have it be a temporary effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. All right, so the, you see the ray. Ah! screams out as the sunlight explodes around it uh, and it is now its turn I'm taking a look at clumsy uh, you know its AC is, is lowered its reflex save is lowered its ranged attacks uh, its sort of reflex based or dexterity based skills are, are down uh, and then stunned more importantly uh, you can't act while stunned and so you lose those actions ex- I just lose those actions. So I only get one action, and then I yeah. gain one back per turn. Yeah. Per round, basically. Yeah, um, but but let me go back to the to the bottled sunlight because I, I I don't know. I just feel like Aldo would know how it actually works, and it is bottled sunlight. When you make it, you can uh, with an interact action, you just shake it, and it causes it to glow for one hour. It sheds bright light in a twenty foot radius um, and it can be thrown like a bomb or you can just hold out the light now oh, are we saying that that's not going to have the same effect uh, I mean it's bright light it's not it's not normal light is it not sunlight is that what it has to be or well but if it's sunlight it's sunlight like uh, it, we're, we're sunlight no, bright light bright light is sunlight bright light such yeah. as sunlight creatures and objects blah 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 some types of creatures are dazzled or blinded by bright light well, this is interesting. Aldo, would you be interested in, uh, I feel like I'm bargaining here, uh, taking away one of those attacks and having the second one be you just hold that thing and create this radius to make that a persistent, uh, clumsy and stunned? Uh, I'll do that, yeah. Okay, I will, and that way I'll okay. give it back a little damage, but then this radius around you is going to be enough to, it's certainly going to keep it away from you. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. So it's like, he's like uh, Sam Gamgee holding up the file of Gladriel. Yes. Yeah. Get away from her, you filth. <laughs> <laughs> if only any of our listeners understood what they're I talking know. It's about. Not, it's not a lot of crossover between Lord of the Rings fans and people who like <laughs> role-playing games. <laughs> Sorry, Skip. You're going to have to save those references for another uh, show. Um, all right, yeah, wow. Now look at the difference there. It puts all of your heroes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Nice. Yes. What a heroic move. That was <laughs> awesome. I'm so, I, I love having the one specific thing that is so appropriate. <laughs> yeah, like it's this. so rare it's and so, precious too to have that. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. So it's its turn. I'm going to move up right to the edge of this. Wow, this really fucks everything for me. Um, <laughs> it's weird. So now I, I want to attack Atticus, but as my attack goes in, it's my attack will be clumsy. <laughs> you know, it's essentially <laughs> like the arm is going to be clumsy as it goes in. Uh, so it's a little, a little bit tricky here in terms of how I'm going to rule it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and try and uh, attack you, like reaching through with a spectral hand, and I'm going to give myself a penalty to do so. Uh, all right, it's still probably going to be a hit there, uh, Atticus. That is going to be a 20. Uh, no, excuse me, that wouldn't be a hit. A, uh, a 30. Yeah, that is a hit. But not a crit. But not a crit. Okay, a lot of damage. 18 points of negative energy damage, and now you have to roll a fortitude save. Oh, come on, man. You know, this goes back to last week. No one's going to remember this. But when I flew over there to do that lightning bolt, I was like, I'm so scared to do this. And this was the exact reason, because I knew right out from that sail was going to come a wraith, and it was going to suck my life right out of me. (laughs) (laughs) I thought with a 27 initiative, I'd be all right. But apparently not. Uh, what do I need again? Fortitude? Fortitude set. 
Fortitude. All right, come on, buddy. Come on. 28. Can't do much better than that. You're all right. Okay. Um, however, That's as it hits you, you could see, like, as you were losing energy, it was feeding off your lost energy and making itself stronger. Uh, it has one more action. Uh, no, it doesn't. It was stunned. It didn't have... It, it couldn't even do that, right? I, oh. Yeah. Well, he hit it with an attack. Yeah. I, I, so, yes, but I'm changing it to the the glow. However, what I'll say is that the the way I'm resolving gotcha, this very gotcha. weird situation, in grabbing you, it's going to lose its final action. Or, like, in, in trying to attack you, it's going to lose its final action. As it crosses into the light. As it crosses into... Walk towards the light. Into the light. All right. It is... Uh, I'm happy with that ruling. It's Suki's turn. All right. Suki is going to, uh, seeing what Aldo's doing, take a note from his book, take a page from his book, and she is going to cast Disrupt Undead, uh, heighten to my fourth level at the Wraith. Oh, nice. Uh, so you need to make a basic fortitude save. All right. As awesome. she releases some, some light energy, some positive energy toward her. I don't care for that. Uh, all right, so I get a bonus to saves versus positive, which I will take. Uh, and that's still a very, very bad roll. 17? Oh, that absolutely, no, no. Is it a critical fail or just uh, a regular? 25 is my DC, so. Okay, so pretty close. Uh, all right, so that's going to be full damage. Yep. Nice. Disrupt on death. Nice. Suki! Disrupt nice. your face! Disrupt your face! 12 uh, plus 3 positive. All right, uh, we'll call it 15. Let me ask you this. I don't know why it uh, says it like that, because it's all positive. It doesn't what? have a weakness to positive energy damage? Um, no, it's just positive energy doesn't... It's, it's resistant to er, a bunch to of things. everything else. Yeah, it's the one it's positive. not resistant to. Yeah. 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 Um, ah. It's got double resistance. Uh, let me ask you this. What are the traits of that spell? Uh, it is... I can't imagine this would matter where it's uh, four undead, but it's uh, it does have some... I don't Unities. think there are any special traits. The critical success, they take no damage. Critical failure, double damage. It would be right, it's right next to the name of the spell, like right under it. Cantrip, necromancy, and positive. Those are the traits. Oh, um, and yes, those are the traits. Yes. Cantrip, necromancy, necromancy, positive, primal. Primal. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, because you're casting it as a druid. Okay, great. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, uh, that was rude is really what it was. Um, do you have and any other action? My, that takes two, and then my second or my third action is just my command animal for when Pepsi goes. Okay. Um, That's it. Pepsi will be going soon. You, what is it like a mind connection? You're like. Yes. Well, Pepsi's my companion, so yeah, they they just know we we practice these routines all the time. <laughs> That's cool. And from your time in the circus together. No. Uh, it is. <laughs> that's what you told me in your backstory. Atticus, no. it's your turn. Different character. <laughs> it's a different character. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> Atticus, what would you like to do? Uh, Atticus will... He's going to fly away from this creature. Freaked out. Uh, he's going to fly away. That. He's going to fly up into the air... Uh, above the deck, above, you know, kind of up by where the sails are. And uh, he'll go over uh, Aldo. He'll go right over Aldo. If you mind, of course, with typical Joe O'Brien luck, this creature does have an attack of opportunity. Oh, no. And we'll take that reaction. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> 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 there have been... No. I, I, there are, <laughs> <laughs> and he, so like 25% of enemies have attacks of opportunity and only Joe provokes them uh, oh boy yeah that's definitely a hit it's higher than what I rolled last time uh, give me another fortitude save oh that's a fail what'd you roll I rolled a 16 Couple things are going to happen. First, you're going to take 18 points of negative energy damage. Same exact roll as last time. It regains hit points yet again from the attack on you, and you are drained one. Drained is brutal. 
drained is uh, automatically going to lose uh, hit points and have your hit point threshold go down. Uh, obviously, when you put that in your character sheet, it'll do that math for you. Um, sorry to interrupt you, though. Continue with your turn. Um, <laughs> all right, so now near death in one round with, like, next to nothing happening. Uh, he is going to... And two to... madnesses back home. <laughs> He's going to fly over the middle of the deck, um, about 25 feet over Aldo, and then um, I want to do... Uh, this is retroactive to last session uh, because I, did, I didn't get an action because of your dramatic retelling of the end. Okay. But I had another action on my turn, which I wanted to use uh, for a, a knowledge roll on this Denizen of Lang. I know I had seen one before, and, you know... You talked Aris about last one. week when we did the cinematic ending. You wanted to use another action. No, yeah, like I had my turn. I, I shot That's it. Fine. And killed it, and then I had one more action. I wanted to. I want to know something about this denizen of Lang, so I just wanted to roll a knowledge. Uh, arc, uh, was it arcana or occult? It doesn't matter. I can do either. Either, yeah, either should work. Uh, all right, I'll do arcane or arcana, and that is a thirty-one. Um, and what I'm looking okay. for is to. I want to know uh, if it has any particular resistance to mental damage. Okay, uh, it does not. Uh, but I will tell you, with such a high roll, it has a resistance to critical hits and to precision damage. Okay. Uh, so he less. would have shared that. Uh, yeah, he'll share that with the team as he's flying by, his life uh, draining for your very eyes. Uh, he'll be dead and around. He uh, has to yeah, has to lay it all on the line now because it's all over. And he looks across at this tricorn hat captain, hoping that one of his allies that survives the dream can walk away hat and he looks across at the captain and his just his head goes down and his eyes sort of like vanish into his head and become just black holes of nothing and this guy just hears this horrible twisted voice from Atticus that's just like I see your mind <laughs> and uh, he is going to cast Phantasmal Killer Oh, this dude. Wow. Yes. So it's just wow. whatever you you can narrate it, Troy. Whatever this guy's worst nightmare is, like it, it emanates from uh, Atticus directly toward him. He's afraid it's of a flying of rat. <laughs> he's afraid of flying. He's afraid rat. of flying rat. <laughs> with, yeah, with holes for eyes. That's what he's afraid of. <laughs> I've been having this nightmare since I was a child. <laughs> Wow, I like this. Uh, I imagine he has this this vision because you you look down at the sh the ship while you're standing, because uh, you have a really good view while you're up there. You see the the blood red sails. The the wood is all this old, dark, gnarled wood, and there's open hatches on the deck of the ship that uh, allow a view below to rowing benches. And there's manacles on the seat of every single rowing bench. So you know from your own knowledge of Denizens of Light, like these are, they, they, they're they they're slavers is what they are, is Denizens of you know, these, these creatures. And so he imagines this moment of all his indentured servants like uprising and <laughs> cool. pulling him below deck. And he sees <laughs> That's this awesome. Like, oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> How terrifying. Uh, and then uh, he rolls, he will roll. save. Will save, okay. Uh, natural two. <gasps> yes. All right, so that's oh. still gonna be. I'm, I'm, I'm tipping my hand here by letting you know what his actual will is. But that's a twenty-one. Oh my god. Shit. Uh, okay. Uh, man, come on, that was so close. All right. Uh, so he is going to take some damage here. Uh, phew, it's a good start, the valley. That is a good freaking start. He takes 8d6 mental damage. Oh, oh nice. Oh, Holy shit. Good. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Uh, uh, all right, so it's a total of 32 mental damage, and he is frightened too. Oh, yes, yeah. No. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this horrible. They're pulling a below deck, finally oh, getting their revenge. Oh, 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 oh. And he feels it. I mean, he really feels it. This illusion is one of the most horrible things that could ever happen to you. Had he rolled one number less, he would then have to roll a fortitude save. If he rolled a natural one, he'd have to roll a fortitude save. Fail that. Just fail. He dies. He dies, On the yeah. spot. Yeah. So, I love uh, the 2E Phantasmal Killer. 
Uh, awesome. So Frightened 2, uh, I, I'll take a status penalty uh, to all my checks and DCs, uh, and then it goes down for each round. But Frightened 2, right out the gate, before he's even acted, uh, is brutal. Uh, just a side note, obviously Paizo has removed slavery from all mention of games from here on out. This is a previous AP and it's still in there. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, but it's more to let you know the gravity of the situation and how evil these denizens of Lang are. Um, okay, and uh, now it is Ethel's turn. Okay, uh, Ethel is going to step up to the captain. Right, we're, on, we're both on the deck, right? I yeah, just... like when he came out of the sail, he just kind of like gently levitated to the ground, whereas the wraith is floating right above the deck. Uh, I'm going to step... <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to step right up to the captain, and I'm going to reach out and try to take the tricornered hat right off. You son of a... <laughs> you love taking <laughs> gifts! I knew, I knew it, it. I knew it! Big Ethel, march it up, I love it. Uh, this is a disarm check, and... The, because of the Frightened, there's a status penalty in DC, so I imagine sure the Reflex is. DC goes down as well. So it's my Reflex DC, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah it'll be a minus two to that for me, so <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah, so I imagine Ethel coming up to him to make this move, and you hammer. don't see anything, Ethel. Like, you don't see any of this illusion. You just see him looking around him and just screaming in horror. <laughs> like, <laughs> Luck the hat off the <laughs> I'm going to give you the DC, just so you know. Yeah. It's still 29. 29. Okay. Wow. 50-50 wow. shot of, of succeeding by rolling okay. that but then I but a success on a disarm does not mean I take it. It means I get a it means he uh, success I get a plus two bonus um, until the start of, my, of that creature's turn. That's right. to Disarm the target of that item get a plus two circumstance bonus and the target takes a minus two circumstance penalty to attacks with the item which doesn't apply. Here. Right, because he's like, no, that's my hat. Get out also, of here. He's trying to attack you. You also have guidance, uh, which I gave you before in the previous oh, episode. Okay. You have a little plus one. And yeah. don't forget, yeah. you have a bottle cap. I know. Okay. Yeah, so we all start with one. They reset zone. from last week. You guys didn't use your caps last week. They reset yeah. every week, so everyone's back to one cap. Um, the same thing happened in Sarnath. Obviously, that had a horrible ending, but uh, you tried to disarm there. What did you say the DC was? 29. Okay. Um, I'm trying to, it's, I, I, I'll pull back the curtain. I have succeeded, but I haven't critically succeeded. So I'm like, do I take the cap? Do I use the cap here? I mean, no, I don't I know if you use a cap when the only thing that will change it is a natural 20. You know what I mean? Like, No. So I, you know what? I succeed. Okay. So now I'm going to do it again with my final action. Hey! And so you get now a plus two now you get a, I get a okay. plus two, but I lose the guys. It's <laughs> like... You're like swiping at the hat. Like, hey, stop. Give me that hat. Give me that hat. Give me that hat. I don't think so. That'll be uh, oh, uh, 31. All right, so that's a success. That's a regular success. Regular right. success, yeah. Yeah. So I, so I, until begin the beginning of his next turn, uh, any 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 of you can try to grab it, and you get a plus two. And he takes a minus two while trying to hold on to it, or that he is only a minus two you. penalty to attacks with it, which he's not attacking. Wait, so we the only... hat and be like, he's, he's, not a you. he's not the skipper. <laughs> so, damn it, Gilligan! Gilligan! <laughs> minus we two. only get the minus hat two. if we critically success? Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's it meant hard. to be hard. If you wanted to steal a, a big bad dude's hat, it should be really hard, but not impossible. <laughs> not impossible. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's uh, meant to be a lot easier if you're trying to disarm like a, l a lower level combatant than you, but like disarm a boss is like really where it gets difficult. And then just remind me, because Joe, you just, Atticus just did another check on the captain. Is the captain also undead or? Oh, yeah, they... I meant to ask that too. Is he also incorporeal? Or is he corporeal? No, you, can see, he don't, you can't see through him like you can. Okay. Right? But yeah, we don't. I don't know if he's undead. Denizens of Lake are not undead, right? They're okay. they're like no, they're from the plane of Lake. Are they outsiders? They're outsiders, right? If they're yes, from they're another plane, is. they're by definition outsiders. I, Lang is in the dreamland or in the dimension of dreams. It's like a part of the dimension of dreams. I'm I'm pretty sure. At least it is in, in Pathfinder lore. I could be wrong. Call in. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna look up Denizen of Lang and all of its stats real quick. Yeah. I'll get the answer for you. <laughs> Wait till never. This is <laughs> important enemy. <laughs> How about um, never. It is Pepsi's turn. All right, Pepsi is going to slither up to the captain uh, and take an attack with his jaws. <laughs> can, I ask a question? can I ask a question, Sydney? Yeah? What's Pepsi's athletics skill? Uh, Pepsi's got a plus 13. Pepsi could, has a chance. You could try to steal the hat. 
<laughs> with a nat 20, right? All right, so you know plus what? Plus 13, and it's a 21, it's a 29. We, plus two. You so just need a natural 20. 15, yeah, you'd have to get a natural 20. Have to get a natural 20, which might be a uh, waste of a turn, so people might say. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Pepsi only gets two Some people actions. Are. And you gotta move Some up as one action. Move up. Some people who provoked an attack of opportunity are about to die. Is it those, <laughs> those people would be the people we're talking I, about? I so definitely Pep- like, let's get the hat and get out of here. So definitely do that. Pepsi's gonna move up and take a bite. If I had three actions, I would try to take the hat and also sure. take a bite. But let me do some damage at least, hopefully. Okay. Uh, or find out if this thing's undead and maybe do no damage. Who knows? Uh, all right. Strike away, Pepsi. That's going to be a 23 to hit. Miss. Okie dokie. So, guys. <laughs> Was there a delay in the Skype call, or are you just being an a-hole? Uh, Suki says, well, a 23 won't hit, so you'll have to go higher, because Pepsi just told me that. <laughs> that's what she, that's what she says. Thumbs up. Uh... It is the captain's turn. Will uh, you move, Troy? Will you just move Pepsi so I don't forget? Where oh, I'm Pepsi sorry. Is? I'll give you Pepsi power oh. after this. Give me, give me, <laughs> give me Pepsi, Pepsi power. power. Give I'll give me you Pepsi, Pepsi power. <laughs> uh, it is the captain's turn. Uh, but before we do that, let's take a quick break. I hold in my hand an orb of great power. Perhaps you cannot see it. Your southern eyes have not yet adjusted to the darkness of Davokar. But that will all change on Thursday, January 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash the glass cannon. When Glass Cannon Labs features Simbarum. Or is it Simbarum? Is it Simbarum? We'll find out Thursday. Now I have to decide what to do here, got a lot of options. Uh, as I said, uh, oh wait, you missed but didn't critically miss, so that removes an image. Uh, oh, I forgot the about captain. the images. Yes, ah. there are. Did the somebody un- already take an image away from him or no? I have it written that he, they did, but I don't remember. No, I don't anybody. think anybody's attacked him, right? But no, no, okay. no. So two images is correct. Uh, okay, so Pepsi did remove an image, so it wasn't for naught. Um, okay, well, who's right next to me? Ethel, of course. Of course! I'm frightened too. You see, uh, he he reaches at his face and pulls down his veil that is barely covering uh, his mouth. And he's got this, like, remember Baraka from Mortal Kombat? No. No. Well, he's got a mouth like Baraka. It's just this, like, alien type jaw with long, sharp, like, knives for teeth. And he goes to bite you. Um, what the here hell we go. is he? He's a denizen of, of Lang. <laughs> uh, that is going to be a 31 to hit. Yes. And a couple of things are going to happen. Okay. Um, first, we'll roll some damage. Not too bad. 17 points of piercing damage. Oh. And now I need a fortitude save. Okay. He bites you. And I mean, it's so sharp. It goes into your skin, and you're just like, oh! Oh! Uh, 34 on the fortitude. You're all right. Uh, you, uh, whatever effect this debilitating bite had does not affect you. It's funny, the, uh, the bite has two traits, curse and occult. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Um, That's some dark shit. S- uh, <laughs> some dark shit has two actions left. Uh, the second thing he is going to do, does casting a spell provoke? I can't remember. You know, I still don't, I still don't know. Like I, I was looking at, it doesn't say specifically, I believe that it does. I was just looking this up. Does it have the manipulate trait? The spells have manipulate traits. They have, you know. Casting a spell does not, um, I mean, I just have. Yeah, it doesn't say it specifically, but it seems to me like. Well, this says material, somatic, and focus components of spells have the manipulate trait, so they do provoke. Yeah, yeah, if they have that manipulate trait, then. I'll try to figure it out. Um, this one has, oh, it's a mental spell. It does not have, uh, it has somatic components, though. So somatic. That should say provoke, right? Just talking? I'm sorry, verbal. that's, I'm sorry. You said somatic. That's verbal. Somatic is like moving his body yeah. around. So that's supposed to provoke? Because that sucks. Um, 
when I'm right there and you're right there, it's gonna, well, Pepsi doesn't have an attack of opportunity. It's just shitty that like the one person with the AO is right there. But if somatic provokes, go ahead and take your attack of opportunity. With the Warhammer. Uh, don't worry about it. It's a natural two. 21. Okay. Wow. That's a, a rare. A yeah, rare oh, miss. there it is. Yep. A somatic, somatic provokes. Yes, yeah, somatic component is a, is a specific hand movement or gesture that generates a magical nexus. The spell gains the manipulate trait and requires you to make gestures. It makes sense. I mean, it happened in one. We're not going to get away with that for free. Right. It's um, funny. It hasn't come up because there's so many fewer attacks of opportunity in 2E. And, I mean, we've just rarely been had casters in melee. So, yeah. Very true. Uh, go ahead and give me a will save, Matthew. Is this a fear effect? Uh, it is not. But it's mental. <laughs> Natural two. Oh, <gasps> no. Buddy. Give me the uh, full John on that. 16. That's a critical failure. Oh, oh no. no. Come Why fifth is it level... always the fighter? The best the, one! This is a little fifth level spell called Phantom Pain. Oh. So you take uh, eight points of mental damage. You will take four points of uh, persistent mental damage uh, on your turn. And you are sickened too. Okay. Okay, could be worse. Do I take That's it bad. at the end the worse. end of my turn? You take yes. the eight damage now, and you'll take the four um, at the end of your turn. The okay. And that's going to happen every turn, four mental damage. It's just this phantom pain that's itching. Yeah, but you get a roll, right, every turn. And you could spend an action to shake it off, right? Or to get, um, a, better, to get a better chance on the roll. Well, I'll tell you, I have four hit points left. So... <laughs> How odd. That is the exact number of damage it will take. Um, I mean, also, oh. doesn't it keep ticking even if you have the dying condition? Like, you'll just... Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, so I wonder, what are you saying? Do you get the flat check to remove it if you are unconscious? I think you do. I think I think you always get the flat check to remo- uh, stop persistent damage. DC 15. Yeah, there's no, I don't think there's anything that says, as long as you're conscious, you get that flat check. Um, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, you're going to take the four no matter what and go to zero. Unless and, I heal. Well, I, I'll take the four no matter what, but I couldn't yeah, heal, but you heal could, myself. Yeah. There's some options here, but that also forces your allies, if they want to heal you, uh, to take themselves out of the fight. Very interesting situation. <laughs> uh, it is Eris's turn. Ever, 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 Eris. Ever, ever. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Lots happened. Sorry. What? Did you double that damage? Is that, is that a flat four? Is that part of the spell? Yeah, so the way the spell is worded is you just take max damage when you uh, fail. You take full initial and persistent, and with critical failure, it's just the same, but you're sick in two instead of sick in one. Oh, There's okay. No double, it's no double damage. It's part of the text of the spell. Got it. Okay. Joe um, always trying to hurt his buddy. It just says you always, persistent, like normal damage, persistent damage can be doubled or halved depending on the saving throw or whatever for the attack. Anyway, go ahead. This uh, captain guy is frightened too right now. Um, I'm so sorry, Gabe. Oh. I made a mistake. What? This was phantom pain. I just gave you the damage if that was a first level spell. This is heightened to fifth. Oh, he's dead. Um, so here's what happens. <laughs> you take enough damage. I mean, I'll tell you what the damage was going to be. It's 20 points of regular damage. Yeah, so I'm unconscious. Too. So you're unconscious, and because it was a critical failure, you're dying too. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, right, I so forgot that it was heightened to five. I was like, uh, just give myself the eight. Next one, eight. Um, so you should go right to dying too. You have die hard, so you'll live forever. But that persistent John, that's going to be a persistent 20 points of damage. Pers- uh, 20 points of damage each turn? Yes. It's maxed out. In failure, it's maxed out. It would have been a, a straight 20. Um, but now it's, yeah. Really? Okay. I'm reading this spell. Wait, you sc- I'm sorry. The The initial mental damage is 2d4, which is eight times five. It's 40 damage right off the bat. And, a persistent, and a persistent 20, yeah. But just to show you the severity of this, Phantom Pain is a first level spell. Uh, the damage increases by 2d4, and the persistent damage increases by 1d4. So it's 5d4 persistent, 8d4 uh, mental, and they're both maxed out because of failure 
and because of critical failure. Wait, you so, said the spell was heightened, though, or it was heightened? Yeah. Oh, it was. I was gonna say that's an insane first level spell. Uh, yeah, first level it's two d four and one d four, not too bad. Okay. But where it's maxed out, it's forty points of regular and twenty points of persistent. So uh, Ethel is at dying two with a, di- a persistent damage that could kill him. Um, and now, I'm sorry, Eris, we've been waiting all episode to hear from you. Listen, there's not a lot that I can do anymore. I've used a lot of my spell slots, and the captain, I think, already has frightened two on him, right? He does. Uh, okay. Actually, it's not time to frighten one, yeah. All right. Maybe this won't be a waste then. Um, I'm going to cast Impending Doom on him. Impending uh, Doom. So you would roll a will save. A will yes. save, you We're say. We're going to try to up those visions that Atticus is giving him. <laughs> uh, yeah. No! Uh, uh, nice. Sorry, yeah. sorry. 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 I, I, I don't think you're reading this right. Me are, are, or you? Are you. Are you reading full initial damage as max initial damage? Because I think you just roll and you take full damage. It's not fo- flat 40 unless there's some other Oh, thing. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm maxing it instead of full. Yeah. I don't think it'll matter where you only have what, four hit what points. What they mean by full is just not halved like you normally have with some saves. You take full mm. damage, which means you still roll it. It's not max damage. Okay, so it's 5d4, and you I was have at four 12. hit. I was at 12 before you took, gave me any damage. <laughs> okay, thank you, Joe. I'm sorry, Eris. Um, You're still going to go down, but but you no, roll but the might, persistent there's a damage. There's chance. He might not. Well, but it's 10d4. If it's heightened oh. to fifth level, it's 2d4 every level. All right, so as long as I don't roll uh, 10 ones. <laughs> All right, you're, uh, you're dying too. Because it was a <laughs> Thank What's you, the persistent damage? Uh, the, persistent uh, the persistent damage is damage. 5d4 each round. So he wrote, but he should roll it. It's not just 20 right, damage. For right, sure, you for roll sure. it yeah. each round. Uh, okay. Thank you. I read that as max when I saw full, but I forgot it was. Uh, okay. Got uh, it. Sorry, impending sorry, doom. Eris. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get it right. We'll figure it out. All right, will save. So you want a will save, do you, Kate? Yes, please. Okay, 34. Cool, that's a success, which means you're not affected for this round. Um, But next round, maybe you will be. Okay, I don't care for that. I don't care for that one bit. Was that a three action, John, or a one action? it's It's a three action thing. Impending Doom is just two actions. Well, it's two actions to cast. Mm-hmm. But it lasts for three, like it's a three round effect. Oh, so you have to, are you saying you have to use an action to, for it to maintain? It doesn't say that there's like a sustained thing about yeah, it. So you still have an action left. You it's just have an action. Yes. two actions yeah. to cast that spell. Yeah, so that's what I do. And you see me do something, but nothing happens. Or maybe you don't see me do anything because I'm not on the same boat as you. <laughs> um, and then I point my sights at this witchy lady over here. And I go, you're next. And I'm trying to demoralize her. Ooh. Uh, with my intimidate. Suki? <laughs> no, not oh, no, me. Right. She <laughs> points to Suki. You're, you're next. You're next, you're next honey. Next. <laughs> I turn around. Also, I love that Eris, like, draped in all her black, like, wispy clothing, and then this other witchy woman. It is like, she's like, there can only be one. Yeah, yeah there can only be one. Yeah. Witch on witch. Witch on uh, witch axe. What a witch. With my intimidate. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, natural 17, I got a plus 14, which means that's a 31. Yes, my intimidate. And Are you demoralized? DC, what's the DC? It's uh, will DC, um, right? Or um, Yes, your target's a will DC. Uh, 24 is my will DC. Oh, Wait, so that's a critical? Nice. Does that matter? I don't, yes, no, you become frightened too. It's not a critical, it's just a success. It's just a success. Yeah, I got a 31. 30, yeah. 31, yeah. 31. Oh, has to be 10 man. over. Um, so you're frightened is, so one. Frightened one. And then I get like the extra ghost buffs is frightened if one. something is demoralized against me as okay. well. Ah. Let me see. Um, I am not immune to frightened. <laughs> so, so the wraith is scared, evidently. Of Eris. I would be too. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, God. We're going back. I'm trying, Matthew. I'm pulling out all the stops here. <laughs> Did you factor in that he's frightened too on the DC that Matthew fumbled on? He rolled a natural two. Right. Okay. It was a so even with the minus two on the DC, it was still a, resulted in a fumble? The minus two on the DC of my guy. Yeah, because yeah, Matthew rolled a 16 total. Yes, 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 yes. 
All right, so it was higher than 28, no, the definitely. initial s- s- DC. Mm-hmm. Wow. Damn. Yeah, and right. this, this is obviously, this is the guy. He's, go, he's wearing the hat. Okay. Right. He's got okay. This is the guy. He's, the guy. he's got the hat. This is the guy with the hat. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy with the hat. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right, so it's demoralized. It's frightened one. Whew. It is an interesting moment here. I'm looking at my Skype screen. Joe, you're number one. Matthew, you're two. Skid, you're three. Kate, you're four. Sydney, you're five. Let's see what happens. And of course, I rolled a two, which is Matthew. Suddenly, oh, this is interesting. Suddenly, the uh, the yard arm, the yard arm. How would you say it? The yard, the yard, arm. yard arm of the ship, like you hear. Swings around and uh, smashes into you, Ethel. He's prone. He's dying on the ground. No, there's no way. It can't oh, it's, be him. Oh, it's prone. Can't go down. Oh, oh that's right. You're down. prone. You're yeah. prone. I forgot. I you're not killing him tonight. He's <laughs> prone. Uh, <laughs> all right. So you're, you're not. Pr- uh, you're prone. So it's not going to trip you. Uh, that means Pepsi's ineligible as well. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you didn't even count him, he's a player too. <laughs> Atticus is also 25 feet in the air. I don't know. Is this thing moving up and down, or is it at the height of people that are standing at the bottom? And Eris isn't even on the boat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You've talked me into it. It's Suki. I'm trying to piss her. It's fine. I'll take it. It's, I mean, like, it's the mechanics. All right. It swings around and hits Suki. Um, (laughs) This is going to be uh, an athletics check against your fortitude DC. What's your (gasps) fortitude plus 10? And Suki's Um, right on the edge of the boat. uh, That's going to be plus 10 at 23. All right, it succeeds with a 31. The yard arm smacks you, knocks you into the water. Oh! Oh no, we haven't got into the water yet with the weird fish. So you go, God. Bah. damn it. Suki goes in the drink. In the drink! I think comedically she sees it coming, you know, like POV shot in a comedy <laughs> movie, and you just hear her go, cool. shit. And then she just gets smacked and like knocked back. This is like a Pirates of the Caribbean moment. Yes, it's, yeah, it's me it as totally Johnny was. Depp going, yeah. oh no, and then it gets me off the boat. Oh no. I'm gonna need oh, more rum. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Smacks you into the water. That's the end of round one. We come back to Aldo. Aldo still uh, emanating sunlight all around him from his okay. alcohol concoction. Aldo, holding the bottle of sunlight aloft, is going to move a bit closer to the wraith yes. to block her off. That's fucking awful. Uh, getting her in the <laughs> radius. so bad for me. Back, you devil! And um, he is going to, with his free hand, reach into his bandolier and pull out a different bomb and throw it. Uh, that is a 26... 26 against this person. That is a hit. Nice. Yes. Okay. So he hits her with a moderate ghost charge. Ah, a little ghost touch position. A little ghost touch job. Yes. So that is. uh, Oh, very nice. Uh, That is 17 points of positive damage. Okay. All goes through. And right and now, in the area of sunlight, it is clumsy two, stunned two, and frightened one from Eris' demoralization. Amazing. So it's just this. This is a novel. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to try it again. Uh, that is uh, it's a 21 to hit. 21 to hit is a miss. Okay, so that's just four points of splash, positive splash damage. Yeah, how great is that to have positive splash? Yeah. That's really lucky. I only have a handful of these sort of wild card things that I can use at this point, but uh, but yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, okay, all right, so now that thing is in real bad shape and it's its turn, and so stun two means I only have one action? Uh, yeah. Yes, that is correct. All right, so, and while well, it's clumsy, it's just kind of like, <laughs> like clumsily lurches up uh, to Aldo. Uh, can we once again just look at this thing close up for a second? <laughs> <laughs> that is, <isn't>, yeah. 
<laughs> this thing should not be frightened. Clubs and stop. <laughs> certainly should not be frightened. All right. It is Suki's turn. Okay. So I'm in the water. Yes. And you know all the rules for drowning and swimming. Thank you. I... I never got a chance to look that up today. I'm glad that you came fully equipped. Yeah, I emailed them to you earlier with a description and everything, just in case this happened. Um, <laughs> but no no need, no fe- have no fear, because I'm going to use uh, my two actions to <laughs> turn into an aerial form, and I turn into a fucking petrosaur. Oh, cool. Whoa! What? You can't just make up creatures. <laughs> <laughs> What's a petrosaur? How do you even spell uh, it? It's a um, pterosaur, I think. Pterosaur. It, it, they call it a petrosaur in the, uh, in the animal. But is, me, there, it's, is there a letter between the P and the T? Oh, it, no. That's my question. No, it's just a P and then a T. Is it pronounced right, So I think ter- it's the pterosaur? same one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Oh, is it like it's an the flying op- opossum? Dinosaur. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. This chair, you know what? By the way. If that helps you, yes. You know what this is? What, what is the thing that I said in A and A that was science? It was like something. Oh, You're pre-science. 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 <laughs> how do you say? Uh, somebody write the word pterodactyl. I want to see how she swings. Stop. <laughs> this is the. This is like reading in front of the class. I got excited and I was just reading it right off the bat. It's a pterosaur. Thank you. Um, but here's my question, Troy. Yes. So that and takes they two. two at, well, no, they fly. Ah, uh, and they fly when their wings are wet. Yes, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, they're diving animals. They were. Uh, they would. Hunt, they would. They were marine hunters. They would. They would dive into the water to grab prey and fly out. With it. So they're uniquely suited to the situation. I'm they a, were the pelicans of prehistory. It's <laughs> about exactly. to say. I'm you a know who can't fly when pelicans. Is a bumblebee. <laughs> Oh, what? Yeah. good thing that I didn't. Helps you, great. Good thing I didn't turn into that. Did you ever piss on a bumblebee? <laughs> no. We're back to the. You'll never fly again, you son of a bitch. You the queen. Don't have anything to say about it, Zip? Honey, are you drunk pissing on bumblebees again? <laughs> um, okay, so my question is then: I have to move to get out of the water. I can't. I have to use my third action to move above the water line, right? Like. Yeah, so two actions is the transformation, and then yeah. your third action is to is to fly out of the water. Right, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. You so then. You want to fly at an angle in a certain direction. You know, you haven't fully sunk yet. You basically just hit the water, and seconds later you transform and fly out. So you can go your full complement. Yeah, I don't. I wanted to surprise the Captain Vodra, Vudra. Um, so I don't think I'm going to fly my full distance. I think I fly back up just to the edge of the boat. I, I don't want anybody to know I'm coming back. They think okay. I fell in, they fell in the water. So Okay. They won't be surprised if this giant flying dinosaur comes in. Uh, but you were hidden before, and then you came sneaking over, and there was all this other stuff. But uh, all right, well, we'll see what happens. There's a big sail there. Um, it is Atticus's turn. Atticus, what are you thinking here? Oh, oh no. Um, <laughs> I am thinking... Oh, I'm having a hard time thinking. Um, oh. uh, so we just have the one left? Is that where we're at? Well, you 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 feel like you've pretty much neutralized this wraith. I mean, I, I've... You've done your homework to know that Clumsy 2 had stunned 2. This thing is going to be its going to be very difficult for it to do any actual damage. So you're left with the captain who has been slinging spells. And, uh, you know, Ethel is about to die. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of bad situations here. Oh, God, I am so angry. Uh, yeah, this is just rough because I'm... Uh, I just don't know what to do. I'm trying to pull out... Try to literally... Not literally, but... Try to pull this rabbit out of my hat that's going to, like, get exactly what Ethel needs to... Is hit How points do... the answer? Um... <laughs> Yeah, I can't heal. I'm just trying to divert, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think you have to be too worried about him just killing Ethel. Ethel's going to die on his own. Now he's going to turn his attention to you if you don't kick him out. Or right. to Pepsi! Right. Not Pepsi. <laughs> Not Pepsi. Uh, oh, this is, this is 
This is tough. Was he crushing crushing fools? Uh, yeah, he's got he's got crazy magic. He's uh, he's a bad he's bad a man. And he's he's what for one more round? He's. It's... Um, I think that's a mirror image on him, isn't it? Oh oh oh! I yeah. thought we had something else on him. We I had. I think like you're a... right because I used a different symbol, but uh, oh, he has impending a... doom round one. Thank I you. Need the... And something else because we meant because I know um, Atticus, I think. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. I, I need to like make a key of what all these symbols. Are. I know it's, it's really fun symbols. to put like a splash symbol. <laughs> yeah. of this. I don't so, know. If, so if I don't know what they mean, it doesn't really help. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I think Atticus is going to move. He's got to fly. So actually, he doesn't really have to. He's going to. Uh, he, all right, he will fly. He'll just fly over a little bit to the south near Suki, but above. He's about 25 feet up, uh, and actually he'll move over to the to the east a little bit too, so that he's below Aldo, and okay. uh, to the east of Suki, uh, because he wants to stay within that light. But he's going to stay at the top end of the sphere of light uh, that that Aldo is casting. So uh, he will move over there. I just uh, my roll twenty is down again, um, but I'll get there. And then he's going to cast a spell. Uh, on the ground next to the guy who's next to Ethel and looking at Pepsi and this, you know, boa uh, or this constrictor snake uh, right up on him. Uh, he's going to make this guy think that uh, we are going to have swarming snakes on him. So right next to him, flanking Pepsi is going to be another uh, constrictor snake is going Ooh. to like uh, appear to have crawled up over the boards uh, right at this guy. So. Should we call him the new Pepsi? <laughs> we'll call him Crystal Pepsi. Crystal, crystal Pepsi. Pepsi. <laughs> he has like a crystal Pepsi. sheen. To him. Yes. <laughs> He's clear, kind of see-through, no color. Uh, all right, so a totally real snake appears on the other side <laughs> of Pepsi. Yeah. And Pepsi says, brother. Just kidding, he can't talk. <laughs> He's a snake. All right, two snakes. Snakes on a boat. You've heard of snakes on a plane. <laughs> uh, it's Ethel's turn. Ethel, you are at dying two. I'm at dying two. I'm going to use my hero point uh, to, to stabilize and go to zero hit points, right? You will go to zero, um, but don't forget you will, uh, regardless of the results of the save, take damage at the end of the end of your turn. Yes. Um, so... Why can but I can only use the hero point after I fail the save, right? It's when you would take damage, then you can use the hero point, or you when you would go to dying three. Is that is that not the rule? Uh, you're right. This came up in a live show, and my brain is just yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Right? I wasn't listening, but I think <laughs> but I, I do believe all your hero points. I do believe you said that. once <laughs> once you fail the roll is when you use the hero points. Wait, 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 but. When, as soon as you die, you spend all your hero points to lose the dying condition, stabilize with zero, and you don't increase your wounded condition. Yeah, but first of all, the, you can only do this when your dying condition, you do this, you can do this when your dying condition would increase. So right now, you have to roll your fortitude save. I roll first. my fortitude save, and then, well, so ideal, the ideal situation is I make my fortitude save, and then take the damage, and then I can use my hero points to stabilize. That would be the ideal situation. Well, let's see what happens. Exactly. <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> so your fortitude save is DC 12, right? Because it's 10 plus your dying condition, which is 2. Okay. Uh, 20. Oh, okay. Wait, is it a fortitude save? Why am I... That seems too easy, right? It did the dying condition? Easy. It's a yeah. flat check. It's a flat check. So I thought you were. I thought you were rolling on that sustained damage or whatever. So, so uh, it's a DC 12 flat check. Then you I did, failed. You failed. Oh. All right. So you go to dying 3. And so, yes. I will not use my hero point. And now I will take the damage. Okay, now you'll take the damage, which would take you immediately to dying four. But I have die hard, so that's fine. And now I will spend my hero points, my one hero point, to stabilize. All right, so you're at okay. zero points, and you lose the dying condition entirely. You don't gain the wounded well, condition. Well, wait, well, wait, why use it now? I'm at dying four. If I take it, that's why. Yeah, he failed his save right, to because stabilize. You, you can use it when you would go down again. So if I you did. Need, that's exactly what I did. No, you went to dying three. Then you yeah. used it and went to dying four. Aren't you die hard? 
I went to I went to dying three. I went to dying three, and then when I got, I took the damage from the persistent damage from the what he hit me with. It took me to dying four, in which at that point I used the hero point to stabilize. Right. I'm just saying, matter. if you don't, you could take another thing of damage before using those points. Whereas, yeah, but I also, but I also could, could, if it's my next turn, I could just die. Or AOE damage or anything like yeah. this is... And you could spend your hero points to stabilize immediately at that point. I'm doing I, feel it like now. I'm ta- I feel like I'm crazy. Like I feel like you're crazy too. I'm doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't gain the wounded condition or increase its value from losing the dying condition in this way. But if you already had that condition, uh, you don't lose it or decrease its value. So you're at zero. It zero. Points, no no dying. dying condition. Uh, but the persistent damage will continue. And so you will... Right, so if you don't use the points now, you get another round of persistent damage, essentially. Because this one's now going to send you to two, whereas it would send you to five, and you heal back to zero. And then you I'm can... hoping that one of my allies intervenes, or we kill the guy in, in the intro. Okay. Um, am I sick in two still, Troy? Um, this was from uh, the... I'm trying to remember, was this, this was from Phantom Pain, right? Yeah. That was nasty. Because I, I crit failed on that. That's right. Uh, yeah, you're sickened too. Now, does sickened go down each round? No. Or no, you have to sleep that off. Not to my knowledge. Does it? Does falling unconscious count? As <laughs> <laughs> sleeping uh, it off. Nice restful coma. A nice restful. <laughs> nice restful concussion. Sorry, you know it's so funny. Like of all the things, the dying. Can, when we get to dying, it's always like, ah, hold on, how's this working? We'll I, know, it, it I, 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 I literally read it read it before between sessions and before the previous session and I still it, did, it just like passed right to me. It's also the problem with playing the playtest because they changed it and I still have the playtest rules in my head uh, but whatever it is uh, it's Pepsi's turn. Old Pepsi. Pepsi doesn't get to do anything because I couldn't command animal uh, on my last turn I used all three actions. Ah, Pepsi That's original recipes turn is over. Kind of shitty but is what it is. Now it's the captain's turn. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Not my Captain. Uh, he's gonna cast a will. Uh, gonna cast. Gonna cast a will save. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Instead of a gun. Suki, you are a no pterodactyl. Can't pterosaur. see me. Yeah, I can't see me. Why can't I see you? Invisible? No, I didn't come above the boat. I said no. I stayed hidden. Yeah, that's right. You did say it. Okay. Um. Atticus, you're flying up there. Aldo, I need you to, count, to give, cast a will save. I can't even <laughs> Aldo, would you please cast a will save? Yes. <laughs> Have you not cast. read the rule book? <laughs> uh, 17. Oh, Nelly. Is that a, that's a critical fail. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. That's not good. That's the second critical fail this combat. That Natural was a little three. spell called Suggestion. Oh, oh, oh come on with this. Uh, and with critical failure, instead of lasting a minute, it lasts one hour. Um, cannot be self-destructive, cannot have any other obvious negative effects. And the suggestion is simple. You there, boy. Go blue dick. <gasps> Is what he okay. says to Aldo. On, on okay. your no. boat? On the blood boat? On, on the, the blood, blood wind. boat? On Bad. the blood wind. <laughs> We're just gonna throw your, this out there. That seems that seems self-destructive. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice down there, there's manacles. <laughs> but they're very Double iron they're, maidens? They're highest Double quality manacles. <laughs> uh, that is his first. Uh, his first two actions. He's got one more action. Does he want to use his Kupri or his Jaws? All right. Apple's right there. I got Pepsi and the new Pepsi. All right. I don't like being surrounded by snakes here. So I am going to... Uh, fuck. Suki's hidden. Atticus is flying. Eris is on the other boat. I've, I've been forced to attack Pepsi. Uh, I will roll to see which Pepsi, I, which Pepsi I attack. One, two, three is the real Pepsi. Four, five, six is Pepsi New Recipe. Uh, all right, looks like I'm going after Pepsi New Recipe. So he goes to strike down at this new snake that just appeared. And uh, Joe, you tell me what happens when he rolls a 36 to hit. Um, the cool looking kukri. 
A what? What did you roll? Cool, 36. Uh, that is a critical hit. Um, I don't understand this. It's so annoying. I don't know why everything <laughs> can't just be easy to understand. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to roll like a will save to believe it's there? Yes. But it doesn't say that. <laughs> It says, what is it called? Minor illusion? It says, uh, no. It says, it, uh, when it hits it, when it hits it with a strike, it can attempt to disbelieve your illusion. When a creature disbelieves the illusion, it doesn't say, like, it's a will say. You know, I mean, I'm sure that's what it is, but just go ahead and roll it. The spell okay. doesn't have a save attached to it, because it is not a, uh, it's not, it's not an illusory image. It is an actual, like, creature that is illusory in a way. But it, it ha he, he can feel it. He can smell it. He can If he touches it, it's real. Are you just making up the will save rule portion of this part, though? Yeah. It oh literally God. doesn't it, say. <laughs> I feel like it I hit it. It does say, so in Archives of Nathan, uh disbelieving <laughs> illusions, it, it does say it would be a will save, but... Yeah, you'd have to look up generally disbelieving illusions. Yeah, right, that's so what that it says. References another part of the core. Okay, yeah, it, it's two ninety eight. Two ninety eight. Yeah. Where's the core? Oh, you got it, said? It's behind. <laughs> me. Uh, all right, so but uh, so right, it's a sidebar. It's a small sidebar, just specific to disbelieving. Okay. Uh, yeah. Joe's if guy. the illusion is visual, blah 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 blah. Caster uh, spell DC. Okay, great. Here's my will save. Not a great roll, but he has very high will. It's going to be a 24. Uh, that is a fail. So uh, he believes he critically really weak. hurt this snake. Yeah, okay. But that it's still there and still <laughs> up. I'll pretend roll some damage. <laughs> really we'll funny. See. I got that good. Yeah. All right. Well, let me tell you something. I may not be out of this yet. Now Aldo is Aldo's out of the combat. Uh, Ethel is dying. Suki's a dinosaur. Eris is on the other <laughs> boat. And Atticus doesn't know what to do. And one snake is real. One isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Pathfinder situation. <laughs> it is Eris's turn. Eris, what can okay. you do to save this mess? First of all, um, your captain mm -hmm. is flat-footed. From the impending doom. Okay. Um, this is the round two of it. And then, nice. so, did we hear Aldo be commanded to go below deck? No, it's like a, I think it's a mental suggestion. Okay. Uh, your honeyed hmm. words are difficult for creatures to resist. You suggest a course of action, which must be phrased in such a way as to seem like a logical course of action. I mean, Sounds like you had to talk Sounds to like me. Sounds like it's I all out. Ah! Go, yeah, all right, so right. <laughs> Okay, well, because if that's the case, where on this boat is the door to go below deck? Um, it is, uh, there's all these little hatches can be lifted. Oh, These little okay. cross-hatched hatches. What I was thinking is like, give something with a bulk of like four feet and then have it sit on the door. But if there's three doors, I don't know. So Eris- There's a lot of options. Yeah. Eris is gonna jump to the next boat. Um, oh. Like, like so. Okay. Flanking Ethel's dead body. You want to take uh, that flank bone? Let me say one thing here, uh, Kate, before you continue your turn. The new Pepsi is dead. <laughs> 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 Wait, it can actually die? Yeah. Well, it can actually die. The spell uh, just ends. But, uh, yeah, the spell just ends. Maybe he like hit Pepsi and then the other snake died and he was like, what sorcery is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what I think is like, because he failed the save, I like the idea that he just thinks he killed a snake and, uh, and then knocked it out of the way or whatever. And it's just like out of sight. Um, the, the save is important because if he makes the save, he recovers part of the damage he took from the creature. But I, I didn't get a chance to attack him yet. Um, uh. But that's kind of a cool little detail. But yeah, I saw it's, it's one line in there in this wall of text. Uh, if it's hit by an attack, uh, the spell ends. So there you go. Okay. Well, you took him out of the action there for a second. Yeah, I mean, I took one hit away from something else that mattered. So 
Uh, to me, that's worth uh, a spell slot. For sure. What are you thinking, Aris? That's uh, one action to jump over there, to leap. Um, one action to jump over there. I feel like I want to be by Ethel to maybe like, not that I want to tank, but I have more hit points than him. Um, maybe it'll distract the captain. Um, is it one move to jump over there? Yeah, because um, it was the five feet, right, you said? Yeah, I'm just doing, I'm, I'm letting you use the leap action. Imagine the boat is five feet closer and you can make that in one thing without taking a running athletics check. Okay, and then I'm trying to decide if I want to do a chicken poon again. Because that's <laughs> Go a back free to the thing chicken poon. Well, why um, wouldn't you? Chicken poon, the captain. <laughs> you know, this captain's a classic begging mistake. for a chicken poon. <laughs> you ever seen Karate Kid Part Two? No. Yes. When Daniel tries to use the crane kick at the end of that movie. Guy just slaps it out of the way. That's chicken poop. But telekinetic. Oh, oh I see. That's so disheartening. What, so what in our game is the drum technique? Um. What is happening? It was Eris's. <laughs> <laughs> that must have looked so weird to Kate. <laughs> yeah, Eris, you are the drum. Do you get it now? No! <laughs> it's a movie. It's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> da, da. <sighs> you people in the movies. <laughs> is your, is that is your movie thing cr- like some like uh, like a, a long held position, or is this something that in your adulthood you cultivate? It was something in my adulthood. I realized I can do whatever I want, and I choose not to do movies. <laughs> and when I was a child, I watched them because like everyone did. And I was like, you were able to break free of that tyranny. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yep. They're too long. Yeah. They're too long. They should be shorter. I don't need to watch a goddamn movie. I don't want. Karate Kid is ninety minutes and it's fantastic. Okay. (laughs) It's not that long. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. There's longer Um, YouTube videos for sure. I also have it memorized. I could just recite it to you instead. This episode (laughs) alone is going to be three hours. (laughs) 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 <laughs> um, all right. I was going to print a retraction on the newsletter that says that episodes of Glass Cannon Live are in 60 90 minutes. <laughs> it's all lies. I was trying to understand. You're setting expectations. Print a retraction. I love it. <laughs> An earlier version of this story said that our shows would be 60 to 90 minutes. I'm sorry. Okay, what's your what are you what's your to hit with chicken poon? Is that what you're trying to figure out? Well, if it's I was worth trying it? to figure out like because there's spirit object and it's very much like telekinetic projectile. So like what the difference is because I get 46 for that, but I have to roll a spell attack. That's yeah. the thing is I could miss. But you're flat footed now, yeah. So I think it's worth it. So I'm gonna do telekinetic projectile. Oh wait, but there's still one mirror image. I think the one meant that you don't have mirror image that you're impending doomed one. Oh. I think I would do that. I, think mm. I'd write that. I feel like I still have one image. Because you okay. have four. You guys just haven't touched him. That's not true. I, I, I did swipe at his hat. And well, Pepsi got a mirror image, too. So I think you might have one left. I think I have one left, yeah. I, I don't want you to the, waste your spell. The, it's it's not, just it's a cantrip. Can, yeah. Okay. Just it's waste worth it. Because even if yeah. you miss, then now he's ready to be hit. And, then and then if you miss by five or less, right? Or if you don't critically miss, you still destroy an image. Exactly. Yeah. And Chicken Poon would deal with the same thing, right? Really? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> anyway, telekinetic projectile. Give me something sharp on this boat. I'm going to fling it at this guy. The harpoon's still there. How about the harpoon from Chicken Poon? <sighs> Going okay. right. Oh, also. I feel like the writers of this episode lost, ran out of ideas. <laughs> clarification needed. You want to do the harpoon again? <laughs> I had a hunch, but I wasn't quite sure. Are we dreaming? Yes. Well, then I'm yeah. freaking frightened. <laughs> I know, I've had I know. frightened enabled this whole time. You know why? Because oh, in, uh, no. in Philly, I made it seem like you weren't sure. Are we mm-hmm. dreaming? Are we not? And then you just kept it on. Well, good. Well, we're moving that. You should take um, off some hit points from the bad guys because Kate should have been stronger. We should okay. start over. Boop, 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 boop. Anyway. <laughs> I, I took them off. Ooh, <laughs> natural. 19. Yeah. So that's yeah. like a 35 to hit. Nice. <laughs> Holy shamoli. All right, mirror image now. You're going to have to roll uh, a D6. And if you roll a one, 
to three, it hits him. I rolled a four. You critically yeah. destroyed his Oh, last man. Oh. Um, I did not. It. I have one more thing I can do then. I have one more. There was only one action, telekinetic, John? Tele- oh, no, no, actually, no. I'm done. Telekinetic was two, and then I moved. All right. She goes, rats. Skidamarinky, too. Well, at that moment, <laughs> the blood wind laughs at you. Laughs! As one of the manacles from below deck flies up through the little grating. She was alive. To grab at Eris's foot. Eris, what is your fortitude DC? That's fortitude plus 10. Uh, 25. Ooh, sadly a 29 beats that. So all of a sudden, boom, you see this manacle come up from the hole in the ground and it latches around your leg and pulls you to the ground. It's like pulling you into the, the mouth of the boat. Next round. Help me. Help. <laughs> it is Aldo's turn. Aldo, this thing was in hand. Now you got this poor woman next to you, but for some reason, you just think you should go down below to investigate. Okay. Uh, do I have to lift up uh, the, the hatch or anything that I'm next to? Uh, I will say that uh, you see the hatch. As you, as you look at the hatch, the hatch just goes... Okay. Very invitingly. Question. Okay. Okay. Now that he has witnessed a violent manacle erupt from de- from below decks, would he now consider this self-destructive? It's a fair question, Matthew. And um, I knew someone like you would bring it up. One of your play. What was someone like me being one of your players? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not one like you. Um, Scorpius. No, the manacle came from the other side. <laughs> this side looks nice. There's like a, a cheese plate down there. <laughs> the alive manacles are on the other side of the park. This is okay. mostly cheese plates. Uh, I jump down. Um, one move action. So then I climb out again. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'd argue he's he's actually free of the spell. Yes. Yeah, it didn't because say go down there and stay down there. Went below said, deck and he came back up. until the target has completed a finite suggestion. Yeah. All right. Just remember next time one of you creeps you suggestion at me. Yes, I'll be way more careful. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, I'll say, specific. Go, go below deck and make yourself a sandwich. And then there make yourself you another sandwich. Right. Go, go below, below deck. deck and piss on the ground for as long as you can. <laughs> yeah. Go Count below every deck. grain of sand on the beach. <laughs> We've all read the monkey's paw. We know how to phrase this. Yeah. All right, so you go down, you climb back up, you have one action left. Okay, I climb back up. <laughs> so funny. How do you guys it's sleep? So how do you guys sleep at night? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna throw. <laughs> so dumb. Right, so he walks out, walks back up, pulls out a bob, throws it right at the guy. Yeah. Troy, is this how you envision this round going? <laughs> Mission accomplished from the boss of this dream. <laughs> And um, do I know, based on what we've learned, do I know if this creature, the captain, if it's uh, subject to, like, poison, anything? Is it uh, uh, mental damage? Like, uh, uh, Yeah, you did a check before, I think, on uh, its immunities and stuff like that. You know it has a resistance to critical hits and to precision damage, but you have no reason to believe... Um, it has any other particular resistances. Okay. Then with my third and final act action of the round, I'm going to, with my free hand, pull out a dread ampule. A, uh, oh, no, 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 not a dread amp- No, 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 a, a uh, yeah, a dread ampule, and I'm going to throw it at him. Okay. Uh, okay, that is a 33 to hit. He's flat-footed. Definitely, I hit. Okay, awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, that is 14 points of uh, mental damage. Okay. And ah! he is and he is frightened one. Oh, God. I mean, this guy is already racked with mental pain uh, from all of the visions and of his impending doom he's been getting. 
All right, so frightened one. Uh, <laughs> my, my symbols aren't matching up. Uh, and he took some damage. Okay, great. Uh, good for you. It is the Wraith's turn, and the Wraith's just like, ah! slides over towards Aldo. And then, oh, you know, I'll take two steps. Ah, two steps, that's all she can do. Poor soul. And uh, it is now Suki's turn. Poor soul. <laughs> she feels so bad soul. for this Wraith. I know. Yeah, this poor Wraith. <laughs> she had a family! Um, <laughs> all right, so I was looking at the stuff with Animal Companion because I was confused. To me, it didn't make sense that I had to do my full three actions and then my animal acts. But what I read, and correct me if I'm wrong, but your animal companion can act at any point within your turn as soon as you command them. So for my first action, I'm commanding Pepsi uh, to do something called support. And basically it holds enemies with its coils, even though it's not actually grappling anything but it interferes with their reactions. So until the start of my next turn, any creature that my snake is threatening can't use reactions. Okay. So Pepsi's doing that because it's right next to the captain. So he is now threatening the captain, just like, you know, coiling up around its feet, scaring him. And then Suki, I'm going to fly up because I'm a pterosaur. Right. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, surprise! Uh, and she is going to try uh, to. Oh, wait. Fuck. Oh, no, I have three. She's going to try to grab the hat off of his head. She flies up right on top of the captain's head with her talons and tries to pull the tricord off his head. <laughs> and he can't react because my snake is threatening him. Okay. This is the same thing as Matthew tried to do it's a disarm attempt. Yes. Um, so this is going to be what? Athletics? I was thinking mine. about this. Did we actually? Is that real? <laughs> Reflex DC. Is what real? Reflex DC. Like, you have to use a disarm attempt to take an unwielded item from someone I mean, it could be that is not clasped or in- tied or interact. held in a hand by it's the fair. person. It's fair. In- it does say you try to knock something out of, knock something out of a creature's grasp. Right. It's not in his grasp. It's just manipulating a hand under there. It also <laughs> it also seems like you as as this dinosaur flying dinosaur you should just be able to take the hat. And that and that's it. But it also seems like that's stupidly easy for and a very important thing. But I don't know, the disarm thing seems ludicrously over difficult for like what Maybe we're Maybe he's like Harrison to do. Ford and he has it stapled to his forehead. <laughs> Maybe. Last crusade. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. It's been it's been burning me up. Well, this is interesting. So I'm just looking at like grab an edge, grab an edge of the hat. Well, no, because there's uh, interact, and interact yeah. is is to grab an object or open right. a door. You know, so it's yeah, it's hard to say. Like, what isn't that an unintended object? If if like something flew down, like an eagle, while I was walking around trying to take my baseball cap. <laughs> You know, I'd have to be walking like I'm driving in a convertible to hope for it to be. <laughs> yeah, we've all attended. been at the beach with seagulls and French fries. To me, right. this is that situation. I'm gonna. I mean, you you also could rule Troy that a success on the disarm check would be successful as opposed to a critical success since it's unattended. Yeah, yeah. True. You, you know, could, I like that. Man. You could argue that you need to make an athletics check against the Fortitude DC or whatever. You know, sure. Reflex like, DC. Flex, yeah. Reflex I, DC. Sure. Like, but I just feel like the plus two is stupid. Well, here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Yeah, I think Matthew hit the nail on the head. It will do a uh, a fortitude, an athletics check against my uh, his reflex DC. If his reflex, because yeah, that that makes sense. You're trying to grab it. He may have the reflexes to be like, the fuck out of here, dinosaur! Fuck off, dinosaur! Dinosaur just trying to take my head. The universal sign for get the fuck out of here, dinosaur. Get out of here! Yeah, okay, I like that. There has to be. I just like there being a roll, and I'll be like, oh, you won. So <laughs> athletics, I don't get to add anything else. I don't think I have anything cool for that. Um, okay, just athletics. Super Wait, cool though. This reflex. Oh, natural eighteen <gasps> plus my twelve in athletics. Beat that. Yeah, hat snatch fever. Thirty. He has thirty. A, a reflex DC of thirty-one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I have to oh, roll he's... a natural nine. Get the fuck out of here, dinosaur! <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, dinosaur! Wait, and he's flat-footed. Flat-footed doesn't change. 
Does flat footed and he's change? Fright- and he's frightened. He's frightened. And he's one. frightened. Make sure you have all your freaking okay. conditions on. Your uh, conditions, of Valley. All right, let's I'm see. I think flat footed ju- is just AC here. Uh, yeah. But frightened is fright. If frightened it's all is all DCs, isn't it? Yes. All checks and DCs. <laughs> then you get it exactly. Yes. <laughs> With a daddy it's in <laughs> <laughs> right, All right. So here's the good news and the bad news. I grab the hat. The bad news is I'm done and I can't move. No, come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I can't do anything else. What did you do? I flew up and over to him, grabbed the hat, and my snake is threatening him so he can't make any reactions. I can't move again. Or you yep. spent the action just to you help You spent the action on the snake. There's, he has yeah, no reactions so to this. I didn't know if he had a um, opportunity attack. Well, he's going to have to beat your reflex DC, which he'll do. But at least that'll take an action. Atticus is flying, unsure of what to do. Eris has now Come been grab grabbed the hat. Come by, grab- a, <laughs> by a manacle that is pulling her below deck. Aldo followed the suggestion to the letter and is now <laughs> back in the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel is dying, and Suki is out of action. So what's gonna happen? Find out next week. Uh, we have to end it. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the cap. She's got the cap. She's got the cap. But, but, but he's just gonna take it right back. He's gonna take it right back. <laughs> Why not next week? <laughs>